lot of times we lose kids when they ask rhetorical, theoretical questions that are not even Lamaisa. Because the medicine is acceptance. The medicine is acceptance. And those people who were able to accept people, that creates influence and then it changes, which is it's such an amazing thing. If I don't accept you, I reject you, I can't influence you. But if I really truly accept you, I don't judge you and I accept you the way you are, then you open up yourself and we can have a connection. The connection creates influence. Influence actually causes you to want to be like me. So you're only accepting it to change the person, then it's not real acceptance. No, that doesn't work. Ayin Shom, Ayin, look at the Arachayim HaKadosh and Vayigash that we spoke about. It has to be real. Kamayim Aparam Laparam is real acceptance. I really accept you. Then the, the person feels accepted. Everybody who's doing Kiruv, by the way, the Chabad guy who has a Chabad house, somebody drives up on Shabbos. If they don't feel that you accept them, they're not coming back. Do you accept Chil Shabbos? You're not even thinking about the Chil Shabbos. You're thinking that I accept this person. I, I, someone's going to say, but, but he's being Mechal Shabbos. He doesn't know. Like, that's not my job. If you're a barber, it doesn't matter what the guy does. You, you cut his hair. Your relationship with him is about his hair. If you're a Yid, your relationship with someone else is, he's a Jew. He's a person. It's not what he does. is Averis. You're going to start going ahead and asking everybody in shul, hi, I want to be your friend, but can you please give me a list of all the Averis you did? Very important to me because how can I be your friend? I want to know first all the Averis. I have, I have actually I made a form, so you just have to check off. I, I listed all of them. Please check off. By the way, Lashon Hara, Rechilos, that's fine. I have no issue with that. You know, those Averis are totally fine. You know, it's like Chil Shabbos, very bad. I can't, I, you know, the relationship is not based on what you do, it's who you are. And if I don't judge you because I didn't walk a mile in your shoes, and I'm sure that if you're not doing what I would do, maybe there's a reason. Maybe you weren't so lucky that you weren't created as perfect as Hashem made me. It's such gaiva that we have. Or maybe you are as perfect as me, but something happened to you along the way. I feel very bad for you. We can discuss religion, but that, that has nothing to do with me and you. Kids always ask me, you don't want me to be from? You don't want me to be from? I say, I want everybody to be from. But if I'm a taxi driver, my job is to drive you. My job with you has nothing to do with you being from. I want everybody to be from. I believe in Gan Eden. I believe in Mashiach. I believe in Hashem. I want it. Sure, the six million Jews out there, but I'm going to like or not like you based on whether you are from? I accept you. You have a story. I'm sure you have a very good reason. You know, Reb Gershon Edelstein says Anusim. Other people say Oynes. Some people say, I don't even care. I trust you that you have a story. You have a story. So why do I have to assume? Now listen to the judgment that people have. If you don't hold like me, what do you hold? That you're bad. I know your whole story, even though I don't. But whatever happened to you, I'll put it on the, on the weight, on the vuxel, what do you call it? Yeah? on the scale, and I already determined just by looking at your nose that you are bad, and you could have done better, and you made bad choice, and you have a big eight Sahara. Oh, oh, hang on, not that you have a big eight Sahara. Because when people say, oh, they have a big eight Sahara, I say, oh, so they're Pater. <laughs> if they have a big eight Sahara, what, are they supposed to fight a bigger angel? No, so no, you have a small eight Sahara, and you're evil, and you made bad choices, and you're lazy. No, can't say lazy. Lazy is a bad meat that Hashem gave you, the person. So if they're lazy, it's from Hashem, so you can't blame them either. But there's enough here that Hashem didn't give you that you could be good and you're bad. That's the other side. My side is, I have no idea. I have no clue why you're Machal Shabbos now. So why shouldn't I assume that probably there's a reason? Probably something happened between the bris and now, right? What did Baron Shechter, Shiva of Chaim Berlin, he was walking outside Friday night and he saw a boy smoking on Shabbos. What did he say? He said, boys, I love you. If you ever need anything, my door is open for you. That means he likes Chil Shabbos. It means he approves of Chil Shabbos. Nothing. Let's say the boy's going to be smoking. It has no sh It's you. I don't know how to say this any more clear. So our kids, the medicine is acceptance. So they want to test you. You really accept me? Yeah. So then they start asking. 
Now it's rhetorical. They're not really, really going to marry all these things, and they're not going to do all these these things. Hopefully, right? And a lot of the times, they're just asking, and the parents will be like, "Now you have to be honest. <laughs> you have to be like, well, actually, no. Um, but not that would not be good. No, I won't accept you. So you lose the patient. You pull out the respirator over a rhetorical question, right? We had we had this over here. You accept me? You don't judge me? No, I don't judge you, Tati. If I had a child with a non-Jewish girl, and I told you, he's Johnny, I want to introduce you to him. So you, you, you're, you're going to accept me? So he's dying to hear, my child, I accept you. I will never turn on you. I will always be here for you. And this is what Hashem does for us. He wants the medicine. He wants that pure medicine. And he's asking a fake question. And the father turns white and faints. Huh? Um, hold on, I got to call Avi. What should I say? First of all, let's hope that it's not true. And let's hope you never have to know. So it's rhetorical right now. Now, what is the emiss? The emiss is, you'll, you'll ask your das taira if you're allowed to at that time. You have to worry now. So the medicine is acceptance. And if you can't do it, they will catch you. That's the point. And they will ask you, really accept me? Yeah, even if um, I march in the, in the gay parade? Even if I, bla I march in the Black Lives Matter? Even if I, even if I, even if I, and the answer is yes, you. Who is you? Who is the you? This is a chelik elikai mimal mamish. This is a neshama that has a guf over it, an uh, emotional person, a nefesh, a ruach, a neshama that went through breakdown, mashber, physical abuse, trauma. They went through a breakdown or they went through nesiyinus. They went through challenges. I have no problem telling my children, I am your father until I die. I don't care what you do. Because they're not doing it lahaches to us. Nebuch if they end up in, 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 in turmoil. So I should leave them? I should leave them? A kid told his father, and if I'm gay? Told him, gay avek. So we look at it, nebuch if that's what you're gay. And I'm not. And I'm not even. I'm not even saying this. I'm not even saying this spiritually against gay. And now I'm saying even gay people would rather not be gay. Wouldn't you rather have a wife and have kids? And how much pain it is for someone gay who's in a from community. It's a life of pain. They didn't choose that. Right. I'm not even talking about we're pro-gay. We're anti-gay. It's against the Torah. Put that aside. Go to any person who grew up from who's gay and say. Would your life be better if you were straight and you were able to have a wife and children? Would you, do, would you prefer that? Of course. Because it's so hard. It's difficult. It's difficult to be, to be different than your family. Go to any Michal Shabbos. Go to any atheist and say, I have a pill. Right? Tomorrow morning you'll wake up. You'll be like your family. So if the family threw them out and hates them, they don't want. But our kids, they'll say, well, so much easier. And you'll see them when you're nice to them. What advice do they give their younger brothers and sisters? Stay in the system. Stay in the system. Behave. It's very hard to be, to be them. Very hard. So they test us because they want, us, they want to taste this medicine. You're giving me medicine. The medicine is called acceptance. So is it a shitriistic, a superficial medication? Or is it real? And we have to really work on ourselves to understand it's real. And we, I was on the phone last night with a family, such, a, such beautiful people, beautiful people, such beautiful people. Mamish, like, just, you, you all love them. Nicest, sweetest, erluch, beautiful, just, just so nice. Their child is literally, and I use this to describe the matter of the child. Sehaim. Confused. Day is night, night is day, left is right, right is left, up is down, down is up, straight is gay, straight is not. Everything is crooked, the uh, uh, whole thing. She doesn't know what she's flying, she doesn't know what she's doing. 
these kids are so, they, they, they sabotage themselves. They, they, they're hurting constantly, ruining relationships, constantly stabbing themselves in the foot over and over and over again. And the girl, she's so sweet, she's so nice, she means well. Such a Rachmanus. So the worse they are, the more Rachmanus. That's what the Balatanya says in Paraklam and Beis. That, that a person could have sinna. You could hate your child for causing you so much pain, even though really, I think we all realize they're not doing it to you. They really don't want to cause you pain. This is happening to them. Rachmanus mevateles hasinna kenoida. Like we know, that Rachmanus, real mercy, is mevatel, the, the hatred. We need a lot of, a lot of ava, we need a lot of Rachmanus. A lot of Rachmanus to be able to do what you're doing. I, I have the greatest respect for all of you. So that's the idea. Real acceptance means I really, really, truly accept you. And I could accept that you're struggling with this. I could accept that you're doing the best that you can with the cards that you were dealt. I really do. I bet on these kids and they prove us right all the time, over and over again. They'll prove us right. Does it mean that every single thing they do is right? Guess what? Uh, can anybody say that every single thing they do is right? So we understand our sin and dysfunction, but we don't understand theirs. They have a bigger excuse than we do, Rabbi say. Some of these kids are tormented and traumatized and hurt and in pain for years. Believe me, I'm much more concerned about us than them. You know, it's like, don't criticize someone because they sin differently than you, right? Yeah, they're thrown. So if you see your kid and you say, I'm going to love you no matter what, even if I'm in a wheelchair, well, I don't know if I can love you in a wheelchair. Yes, even if you're in a wheelchair. Even if I have broken legs? Even if I scrape my knee? Like, that's what they're doing. And the answer is, this bond, this thing that we have, is forever. It's not unconditional love, it's unbreakable. And you can't love it. Even the parents who are throwing the kids out of the house, they're crying at night. It's unbreakable. You cannot break the love between parents and child. And the kids need to know that because they don't believe in it because they don't have their own kids. So in their life, they can unlove people that they think they love all the time. We tell them, this is forever. Even if I steal, even if you steal. Even if I do drugs, even if you do, even if I sell drugs, even if I, yeah, even, 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 even. Yes, because it's true, I will always be here for you. And I believe in you, and I know you're doing the best that you can with the cards that you are dealt. And you know what? It's true. It's true. I had somebody over by my house for Shabbos. And Friday night after the meal, he took his car and he drove away and he left. And I'm not on the Bezna Shalmala, and I hope not to be there for a long time, okay? But on the Bezna Shalmata, I am telling you, again, I'm, I always have to say this because people are out there are crazy. I'm not a rabbi. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just telling you my, okay? <laughs> people make me crazy. I'm telling you, so putter. If, if what happened to him would happen to me, I would also be in the car. If you, if you, can, you, if, can you feel his pain and then, and then you could paskin on him? Or are you just going to sit out there with, in, in, your, in your life and look at somebody else and paskin he's a Mechal Shabbos? So easy, how convenient for people to decide uh, if that other people are bad. And then you show them a videotape of their own Averis and they'll have, oh no, but you don't understand. Uh-huh. Okay. Maybe you don't understand what they went through. If any one of us went through the life of this person and the pain that he went through, we would all do the same thing as he did. And we have no right, I'll be tired to say different. Have I done as color Adam Lakavskos? I'll todden as Khavercha Ajitagilam Kaimai. So people don't people don't realize how much judgment is going in their mind when they just say, Did he who says he had to do well, I don't think he had to do da da da. Listen, you're being over and picking up and have you done it? You're, being, you're the problem. So we have to reinig the the oigen. We have to clean our eyes, because in this world, it's a world of sheker and a world of judgment and a world of judging other people negatively. 
you know, it's, it's something could happen and then you'll hear all the people, all the people come out and start saying negative comments and negative comments. And my kids know I'm not fun to be around anymore. I'm so sensitive. I'm in shul, I'm, I'm not going to have any friends ever. You could sit around a kiddish and all of a sudden a guy just says something and I'm like, I'm sorry, but how do you know that? Nobody wants to be around that guy. And somehow I became that guy. People talk shtusim. People talk shtusim. And, and, and shtusim on a yachid. I heard a guy say shtusim on a, on a tzibur. A tzibur of Yidin, he's going to say something. He's going to take an organization and he goes, shup, shup. So I told him, and I had a kiddush when the guy's drunk, and I'm not, it's not a fair fight. Because I'm trying to talk logic, and he doesn't care. I said, I just have one question. You made a statement. You willing to back that statement up? It's like, whoa. Back up that statement? You mean statements have to be backed up? Like, I can't just say negative stuff about people and neighbors and organ like what i mean i have to back it up i said how much money do you want to bet on the words that you said would you bet ten thousand dollars no so why'd you say it so why'd you just machavek an entire organization and just why it was a, it was a story a few weeks ago and somebody publicly spoke out against an organization and I got feedback from people. I was a little bit involved. And people were tumbling, and, and there were a lot of people that were so happy that finally somebody came out and spoke out against this. And, uh, uh, and I, told, I told the guys follows, look at the eyes of these people that are happy. Look how happy they are. Look how geschmack they have it. It's a tsara. If the guy spoke out against an organization and he's right, it's a tzara. If he's wrong, it's definitely a tzara. This is very sad. It's painful. If a guy goes out and he, let's say, let's say he would pick whatever, chasidus, they're corrupt, right? People will say, eh, they're corrupt. This is very sad. This is dibasim ra. This is bad. Either the guy is wrong and he's mavaza, a tzibur of Yidin and a rebbe and a, and a yichus, and he's wrong, which I feel very bad for that guy, Lashon Hara on a or he's right, and I'm certainly bad. So if I'm going to be involved in this conversation, I'm not going to look like I'm eating a delicious steak. And these other guys are like, yes, go ahead, it's only Yiddish. So excited, so excited, it's hak, it's hak. And then nobody even remembers it, and meanwhile people are... Are, are, are knocked and reputations are knocked and, and without knowing anything factual. So we have to be very careful about that. I think I moved a little bit off topic. Let's get back to what we're here for. They want acceptance. Give them acceptance. You can't. You have to work on yourself. You have to, it's very, very hard. The small tzaddikim were only able to accept small rishayim. That's what the Nesiv Shalom says from the Baal Shem Tev. Big tzaddikim were able to accept big rishayim. We have to become bigger tzaddikim so we can accept. Accept means that I, I could realize that there's a story here and I'm totally not going to judge you for it. Our kids want to hear that. And it doesn't make them worse. It makes them better. It makes them healthier. Even the regular kids. My kids, my kids, no. <laughs> I'm stuck. If my kid struggles in Yiddishkeit, I have to love him. I can't throw him out of the house because then I'm out of business. <laughs> it's like the guy from the Chavetz Chaim Heritage Foundation. He came to me. I was going to curse him out because who could he tell? He can't tell Tok Lashon Hara. He's out of business. He's the one guy that you can just curse and he can't tell anybody. I have to accept my children. No? So why don't they go off to Derech? It empowers you to want to be healthy and good. It doesn't make you, but people have struggles and you have to be prepared to, to believe in them that they're doing the best that they can with their life. And then you could support them and boost them. So when they challenge you, it's just, it's just they want to know that you're real. So now here's the problem. It depends on what your medicine is. If your medicine is acceptance, 100% acceptance means you're ready to accept. If your medicine is something else, 
then you don't need to say, I fully accept you. But our medicine is, I accept you fully. I will never judge you. I will never reject you. This kid driving on Shabbos, on Shabbos, he told me, what did I listen to? Tyra. He listened to Shiure Tyra. Because he was only Michal Shabbos. Go around that way so you don't go on the camera. Right there. Very good. Yeah. For your sake, I'm saying. Shiure Tyra he listened to. So now you're about to stone him for throwing on Shabbos, or a terrible person, Michal Shabbos for Esya, and you're bringing out all these Yain, this Yain Nesach, and whatever. You pick up the stone, I say, hang on. I hear something. Oh, Tafyaymi. Oh, Tafyaymi, for sure we have to stone him. No, so, oh, he's listening to, to, to Shire Taira. Wow. So now hold on, maybe we shouldn't stone him yet. Now, what are they going to do up in Shemayim, in the Bezna Shamala with some of Michal Shabbos, full of tattoos, eating treif, and listening to Shire Taira? Not like in Vilna. Not Lahachas, because he wants to be an Erel Chayid, but he had a panic attack, and he's suffering, suffering, suffering. What are they going to do? Okay, well, we'll leave it up to them. But well, we can say that he's Potter. We could say that, that we, our job is to, is to see the good. Our job is to boost him, to be makar of him, to heal him, to pray for him, not to hurt him. That's our job. So that's the answer for these kids. Really? Even if I... Yes. Because my relationship with you is forever. Forever. We don't all do what our fathers were proud of. We don't all do what we are ourselves proud of. We don't all do what makes Hashem proud. Right? But Hashem says, you come in and I'll forgive you. There's al there's Hashem the Baganu, there's Lachlanu. It's in the religion, is mess up, mess up. But I believe in you, that you're going to be, you're amazing. You're going to do great. And you have to really believe it. You have to believe in your kids and believe that they are chelik alikami mal. Mamish. And in our generation, these words are, are very serious words. People said it for years. Really? It was easy to say then. Now, do you really believe it? I do. If you love Hashem, you love His children. And we want Hashem to love His children. And we want Hashem to love us, even though we're not our grandparents and our great-grandparents. And this is the way we do it. Like we said from time and time, we love our kids, even though... And we really, we really love them and don't judge them. They have a story. We trust them. Hashem will do the same for us. Right? The Haish of Levuvais Albunim and then Vleibanam Alavoisum. And that's why it says that's what that's what Eliyahu is going to come and say. This is this is his his theme, his motto. Why? Out of everything Eliyahu Novi can say, Mashiach is here. Let's go home. No, he has one thing to say. Fathers, you got to go first. Parents first. No, he should say I'm sorry. She should say I'm sorry. No. The he should live always abundant and then the live one of always. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, makes sense?